This video will explore hydraulic boundary conditions SRH2D currently has with SMS and understand how they might be used. Boundary conditions are just as the name implies. They are specified boundaries on the mesh which impose certain conditions on the model. These conditions most often take the form of an upstream inflow rate or a downstream water surface elevation, but there are many types of boundary conditions and it is important to know what options are available and how they can be used. We will begin with an existing SRH2D project that contains a few SRH coverages that have already been created. In older versions of SMS, boundary conditions were assigned using node strings tied directly to the 2D mesh. However, the current SRH2D interface within SMS assigns boundary conditions using feature objects in a coverage which are then automatically mapped to the mesh when a simulation is run. We can see how this is done by selecting our boundary conditions coverage to make it active and selecting our upstream boundary condition. We can then double click on the arc or right click and select assign linear BC to open the boundary condition dialog. Note that there are two types of inflow, subcritical and supercritical. For most modeling applications, the subcritical type should be used. It is generally recommended to avoid the supercritical type. Good practice is to define a model domain such that the flow boundaries are located in areas where the flow is subcritical. Both inflow types allow the discharge to be modeled as a constant value or as a time series, and the flow is assumed to be normal to the inlet boundary. The distribution at inlet option refers to how the flow is introduced to the model domain. The different types available are conveyance, profile, queue, and velocity. The conveyance option distributes the flow based on a unit conveyance model as calculated by SRH2D. The velocities are then calculated and are allowed to vary along the boundary faces. The profile option uses a depth averaged velocity profile to distribute flow. The Q option assumes a constant unit discharge along the length of the boundary. The velocity option instead assumes a constant velocity magnitude. The distribution type chosen can have a significant impact on the results and the stability of an SRH simulation. We'll leave it at the default setting Conveyance and click OK to exit the dialog. We'll now take a look at our downstream boundary condition to see what exit boundary types there are. Note that we have three options, Exit H, Exit Q, and Exit EX. Exit H refers to using a water surface elevation value at a location with subcritical flow and is the most commonly used. There are a few options for the Exit H boundary, which we will cover before moving on to the other two. The constant water surface elevation option lets you either specify your own value or calculate the value using the populate dialog. The populate calculator uses Manning's equation along with an elevation data set to approximate the water surface elevation at the exit H boundary. The populate command also lets you choose between normal and critical depth calculations. Normal depth correlates to steady, uniform flow, and critical depth is the depth of flow where energy is at a minimum. Because the elevation dataset being used is on the mesh, it is important to place the downstream boundary completely within the model domain. We will show an example of using the populate calculator and give values for the slope, Manning's n, and the estimated flow across the boundary. These values are not preserved by SMS after leaving the populate dialog, and so the values used here should be recorded elsewhere, such as in your project's metadata. 
The plot then shows the profile of the bathymetry along the boundary arc, as well as the calculated water surface elevation value. This value is not applied to the exit H boundary condition, unless OK is selected. The rating curve and time series options for exit H are typically used for unsteady flow simulations, where water surface elevations are expected to change with time. However, rating curves can also be useful for steady state simulations. Note that when clicking on the Define Curve button for a rating curve, the Populate command is again available. In this case, a range of flow needs to be defined to calculate a corresponding range of water surface elevations. These can either be entered manually one by one, or by specifying a minimum, maximum, and delta value, and clicking Add. Setting the other values and clicking Plot gives the same cross-section as before, but now with a minimum and maximum water surface elevation shown. Exiting the plot and clicking OK populates the XY series and plots the calculated rating curve. One application for the rating curve can be for when unsteady flow conditions at the exit boundary are necessary, but sufficient observed data is not available to define a time series. SRH will then use the rating curve to allow varied flow across the exit boundary. The exit queue option lets you specify an outflow value, similar to the inlet queue. However, this option is only intended for cases where the model has multiple exits, in which case the exit queue boundary would be used as a secondary exit option. The exit EX option is a boundary type where the flow is supercritical. Again, for most SRH 2D models, it is recommended to use the subcritical inlet queue and exit H options. Besides the inflow and outflow boundary conditions, there are other types that can influence the flow in the model. The wall and symmetry options are boundaries which flow cannot pass through. The wall boundary has a no-slip condition and imposes flow shear stress on the adjacent mesh cells. All unspecified boundaries on the mesh domain edges default to a wall boundary. Walls internal to the mesh domain are typically used to represent banks and islands within the channel. Additional roughness to walls can be added in the form of roughness height, which is a measure of the wall's surface smoothness, to increase the wall's effect on the results. The symmetry boundary condition is essentially a frictionless wall. This can be used to reduce the extent of the model to a symmetric subsection of the overall physical system. An example application can be to reduce the complexity of a model, such as a symmetrical flume, by dividing the model in half and applying a symmetry boundary condition on the new boundary along the center of the flume. The monitor line option is an internal boundary that has no effect other than to record the simulation results across itself as the simulation is being run. SRH2D creates a different output file in the solutions folder for each monitor line. The output files for monitor lines are identified by the LN at the end of the file name and are numbered in ascending order based on their ARC ID. In this model, our monitor lines have an ARC ID of 7, 8, and 9, and those correspond to LN1, LN2, and LN3, respectively. Placing a few of these boundaries at different sections of the model area can help to confirm the continuity and stability of an SRH simulation. The file can also be used to monitor the simulation's progress by opening it external to SMS as the SRH2D simulation is running and observing the latest time step of solutions that is recorded. 
hydraulic structures, such as culverts, weirs, and bridges to name a few, are also modeled using boundary condition arcs. Each structure is specified by first selecting two arcs which represent the upstream and downstream faces of the structure. These are further explained in another video, the SMS Learning Center on Aquaveo's website, or on the SMS Wiki, and links are provided at the end of this video. This concludes the applications of the SRH 2D Boundary Condition Types video. Please visit the Federal Highway Administration's website or the SMS Wiki pages to learn more.